Okay, so what's next? Um, how do I wire up my stops and pistons? That's uh, a question that I get asked quite a lot. Um, probably two or three emails a week asking me that. Um, and the answer is, <laughs> the answer is flippantly quite simple, exactly the same way you connect up your keyboards. Um, and yeah, I, I guess that does sound a bit flippant perhaps, but electrically speaking, uh, that is exactly the answer. Um, because from an electrical perspective, the encoder doesn't know whether you're pressing a key or pulling a stop. All it sees is uh, a switch operating and connecting two or one row and one column of the matrix together. Um, possibly that's not the best way of explaining it either because we don't visualise it as a matrix. But um, basically when you press a key on your keyboard, it operates a switch, it connects one of the note inputs to one of the octave inputs, or scan inputs, as I think they're called in the other video. Um, and that causes a note on, or note off when you release it, signal to be sent from the MIDI port. And stops are exactly the same. Um, when you connect up your stops, you connect them up in exactly the same way as keyboards. And when you pull a stop, it sends a MIDI note on uh, event for whatever note number that stop might be connected to. It doesn't matter what number it is because unlike notes obviously they don't have to go in any order. All that matters is that Hawkwork can see that there's been a note on event and provided that Hawkwork has been told in the setup process that that note on event equals that stop being pulled then Hawkwork's quite happy. It'll deal with that all day long. Um, the major difference between stops and keys is that when you pull a stop it will send a note on event and that's it, that, that happens. You then play whatever notes you're playing on the keyboards which send a whole bunch more note on and note on event, uh, note on and note off events for the music that you're playing on whichever channel it is for that particular manual. And then at the very end of it there's a good chance that you either push the stop back in or you press general cancel which does it for you um, at which point that will see or the encoder will see that as that switch for that stop being opened and it will then send a note off event so as far as Hotwork is concerned uh, a note on event is a stop being pulled out <coughs> or becoming active and a note off event is that stop being pushed back in or becoming inactive so um, as far as how you connect them up it's exactly the same you can either put diodes on them um, and connect them in groups of 12 just like you did with the keys so you have an octave of stops if you want um, or you can use easy strips to connect them whereby you would just connect again you'd have a um, down one side assuming that they're they've all got two connections okay for, for the switch part of them anyway um, once one connection from all the stops would be connected together in groups of 12 that would go to the scan lines on your encoder because they're your octave common lines for want of a better term you're having an octave of stops you've got 12 stops and then the other side of each stop would connect via a diode to the 12 different note inputs so that's one way. The other way is you can use easy strips. So again, you just connect one side of all the stops together uh, in groups of 12. Uh, they're your octaves. Um, and the other side, you just connect to all of the inputs on the easy strip as if they were keys. So there's the C input, C sharp, D, so on all the way up the keyboard. Um, you connect those to the stops totally randomly. It doesn't matter which ones connect to which stops because it doesn't have to. It doesn't care which notes you're playing because they're not notes, they're just stops that you're pulling. And Hawkwork knows that on channel 5, for example, if that's what you set it to, it doesn't have to be channel 5, it can be any channel you like between 1 and 16. Um, but Hawkwork knows that uh, that is a stop. Uh, and the way it knows is that when you first set it up, um, if you right click on anything in Hawkwork with your mouse, um, you can do the MIDI or select the MIDI auto detect feature. Uh, you then pull the stop out, push the stop in, which will send a note on when you pull it out and a note off when you push it in. Hawkwork will see that and it will go, oh, okay, that note on and that note off equals that stop. 
and it's as simple as that it's really really easy so uh, you don't need to be worried about how you connect up your stops um, and how you connect up your pistons thumb pistons toe pistons um, they're all exactly the same they're just switches everything is a switch as far as the encoder is concerned um, and everything is just a, a MIDI signal as far as Hawksworth is concerned so it's all really easy to do um, what else was I going to say about that? Yes, if you have motorised stops, um, it's much more exciting if you have motorised stops um, in every respect really. It's much much nicer to play with when you're playing the organ. Uh, it means your thumb pistons actually look like they're working because when you press one of them, the right combination of stops all pop out on their own, which is great fun, um, just like the real thing. And when you press general cancel, they all pop back in all on their own, which is, which is great. Um, it gives much more of a feeling of realism uh, to the whole thing. However, it's a little bit more difficult to, um, to wire it up. Uh, and the reason being that you're not just dealing with inputs from the stops, you're not just pulling a stop out and needing that to send uh, a note on to Hawksworth. What you also need is for Hawksworth to be able to send a signal um, to the stop to tell it to pop in or pop out on its own. And the way we do that is with a MIDI decoder. Uh, so if you look on the, the product list of the things available from the Hawksworth hardware website, there is a, a MIDI decoder uh, available. And that does the opposite to the encoder. So Hawksworth sends a MIDI signal to the decoder. It could be a note on and off or it could be something called a NRPN, uh, N-R-P-N, which stands for Non-Registered Parameter Number. Um, there are only a finite number of notes that can be sent using uh, MIDI. Uh, There's 128 different uh, notes, goes from 0 to 127. Um, but with non-registered parameter numbers, uh, it goes from 0 to 65,535. So if you've got more than 128 stops, you're going to need to use NRPNs, or NRPNs, um, as I think most people pronounce the thing. Which is fine, the decoder deals with that. So the decoder would connect to the actual magnets, the electromagnets that operate the stops. Uh, and there will be a video on this, but again, it's pretty simple really. It's just, well, I was going to say the same as, but it's very, very similar to how you connect up um, the stops to the encoder. So if you've got a motorised draw knob, or a motorised stop tab, uh, on a theatre type organ or something like that, um, you will find that it has got a whole bunch of connections on the back of it. There won't just be two. Um, there will be two connections for telling the organ when the stop is pulled out or pushed in. And if you look carefully at the stop itself, you'll find that they almost always go to a reed switch. Which is a little glass tube with um, a couple of little metal um, levers inside. <clears throat> so that's the bit that connects to your encoder because that's what tells it when the stop is pulled out or pushed in. And then there's usually either three or four other connections um, on the stop which go to the magnets, the electromagnets, which power the thing, make it move in and make it move out. Um, and the way you deal with those is that one side of them, so if there are three connections, then one connection will be common. There are two coils, one coil to move it in, one coil to move it out. Okay, um, so one, if it's got three connections, um, one side of both the in and the out coil will be connected together, and that's a common connection, leaving you two more, obviously one in and one out. Um, so the common side of the, um, the stop magnets, and the stop coils, will connect to your power supply. Stop power, the uh, stops are usually powered at either 12, well, actually it's 15 volts, um, or 24 volts DC. Um, so you would connect one side of all your stops to that 15 or 24 volt DC, dependent on what type of stops you had and what their requirement was. And the other side, you would just connect one of the 
inputs or outputs as it really is on the decoder so again it's really simple I mean you end up with masses of wires uh, if you've got 50 stops and they're all motorized you're going to have 50 um, connections going to your encoder via the normal 12 by X matrix so that's going to give you um, your what would it be 16 yeah 12 things or 50 so 17 wires um, to, to accommodate those 50 then you're going to have one side of all of the coils connected to your power supply uh, so that's another one wire but it needs to be quite a heavy duty one because they actually take quite a lot of power um, and then you're going to have a hundred signal wires or control wires is probably a better term for it going to the decoder because you've got 50 stops each stop has an on coil which is one wire from each stop 50 wires and each stop has an off coil which is another wire from each stop and there are 50 stops so 50 wires so you end up with 100 wires um, going to the decoder board just for those stops so it all gets a bit um, messy <laughs> if you're not careful about your cable management um, and, and that's an, another thing just to note really uh, I've had one or two guys who have um, bought all the stuff and put it all together and then emailed me and said oh this that and the other doesn't work what should I do and they sent me some pictures and some of the pictures that I've received uh, I'm definitely not mentioning any names here um, but some of the pictures that I've received how they haven't quite got there in the first place I've, I've got no idea really to be honest um, because it's, it's a complete bird's nest and if you put it together like that, sure, you can put it, the whole thing together in you know, maybe just less than a week. But when it doesn't work, or if it doesn't work, trying to figure out where, where each wire is going to and, and what's wrong, um, you're probably just going to be quicker and rip it all out and start over. Um, and that's what a couple of guys have done, actually. Uh, and then done it a second time and made it nice and neat and tidy and tested things as they go along. Um, which is another tip I suppose if you're building one of these things and you're converting it or building it from scratch test it as you go along um, by which I mean put the first keyboard together connect the first keyboard up to the first easy strip or wire it up with its diodes if you're doing it manually connect it up to the encoder and test it make sure it works make sure everything works about that every note works there's nothing intermittent um, make sure that it's all good that's really easy to do once you're happy with it then do the next one because if you wire up three keyboards a pedal board and 50 stops and then you test it and one note doesn't work on one keyboard a couple of notes don't work on another one note stuck on on the pedals you, you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to find exactly what's wrong um, and, and fixing that one so test it as you go along is my advice um, and it's, it all becomes a whole lot easier. Uh, the encoder itself, the, uh, the easy encoder, will help you to test it because if you connect it to your computer via the USB connection, um, which is only for programming, connect it to the USB of your computer, open PuTTY, as explained in the other videos. Um, when you press a key on your keyboard or when any other MIDI event happens, then it will print on the, on the screen, on the terminal screen, what's just happened. So you press middle C um, on your keyboard, it will say note 60, um, or sorry, MIDI channel, whatever channel it is for that keyboard, note 60 on. And when you release it, it'll say MIDI channel, whatever it is for that keyboard, note 60 off. Um, and that's really helpful because you don't have to have something plugged into the MIDI output and listen to the noise it's making because you've got too many variables to do it that way. If you're just testing it, you plug a MIDI cable from the encoder into a synth module, into another keyboard, into Hulk's work, whatever it might be, uh, and it doesn't work. How do you know whether it doesn't work because there's something wrong with your wiring, whether it's something wrong with your um, the setup, something wrong with the programming that when, when you've programmed the encoder. How do you know that there's not something wrong with the setup on the synth module that you're using? 
Um, there, there's just too many variables. So by plugging the encoder into your computer in the same way as you do to program it, um, Open Putty, which is the um, the terminal program that we use to communicate with the encoder. And as I say, every time something happens, every time there's a MIDI event, it will print it on the screen. So you don't need to worry about connecting it to anything else. Um, and, and that's my little tip really, is to, uh, to do that as you go along. If that's the little tip, the big tip, the really big tip is do not leave it connected to the computer when it's finished and everything's working. Okay. You can use the USB socket <coughs> on the encoder to power it. There's no problem with doing that. But do not have it connected to a data source or anything that it can talk to. And the reason being that, as I said, every time a MIDI event occurs, it prints it to the terminal. And that takes time. Um, it's set up with, uh, with something called a bode rate. Okay? And that is basically the number of characters that it can send per second. So when it's printing text, it can only send 9,600 characters per second, which sounds like a lot. Um, but when you actually consider that, uh, I think that's actually bits per second actually, rather than characters. A character is eight bits, eight, eight um, data bits. So I think the bode rate is actually bits per second. So it can send 9,600 bits per second. So divide that by eight, that's how many characters it can send. And then if you think about what it's actually got to do, if you're playing a very, very fast bit of music um, with two hands and two feet, it's pretty much simultaneously sending already four different MIDI events at the same time as you're using your four hands or your two hands and your two feet. Now, it's possibly sending more than that because obviously you've got more than one finger on each hand. Um, and as well as sending that to hook to work, it needs to print it to the screen. And the printing it to the screen, because of the speed limitation, will slow it down so much that it actually becomes noticeable and you'll start missing notes. So if you have that problem, make sure that it's not connected to anything it can talk to. Uh, just power it via the USB, but don't leave it connected to a computer once it's all done and you're using it for performance. Um, that's pretty much covers that bit, I think. So again, hope that was helpful.